The players of GTA Online today are used to doing heists over and over and grinding endless hours to make decent money. But imagine this, you load into a GTA Online lobby, you're driving around for a while, and out of nowhere, someone randomly sets a bounty on you for $200 million. Or you rob a convenience store, and instead of the measly 2,000 you usually get, you instead make over 1.7 billion. While it may sound like a dream to players today, this was the reality for everyone playing GTA Online in December of 2013. What started out as a few guys that found an interesting game file, then turned into hundreds of thousands of players making trillions of dollars every minute for a whole month. This is the story of GTA Online's most infamous exploit ever. The earliest stages of GTA Online back in 2013 is what I like to call the golden era of glitching. Car duplications, modded cars, a new money glitch found every day. People were doing everything but playing how Rockstar intended. And while Rockstar was slowly trying to patch those, the Seven Sins community was about to uncover the largest exploit that GTA Online would ever face. On December 6, 2013, a user on Seven Sins forums named WAN5 discovered that there was one file responsible for all the money and RP values in GTA Online, and he theorized that if there was a way to modify the values in this file and replace it with the original one on a regular console, then he could break GTA Online's economy forever. It was easy enough to do all this with a modded console, but due to an oversight on Rockstar's end, WAN5 believed it should be possible to have this work without one, meaning anyone could do it. But while WAN was trying to figure it out, another user by the name ECB2 had got it to work after just a couple hours and uploaded a video of the first working DNS code exploit in GTA Online ever. This showed that WAN5's theory was possible. However, while ECB2 was the first to get it working, he didn't want to tell the community how to do it in fear of it getting patched. So WAN5 went back to work trying to figure out how he did it. And just two days later, with the help of some other community members, WAN had finally solved it. The news would spread to other people in the forums, including one user named JWN, JWN, who made a tutorial on how to do it. And from there, the news was spread everywhere. DNS codes began to plague almost every GTA Online lobby for the next month. Most people at the time, including myself, didn't even know how this exploit worked. But to be honest, you didn't need to. All you had to do was find a code online, change it in your console settings, load into online, and you were now a billionaire. It was so bad that you could change your DNS, load into a game, rob a store, and make three times the amount needed to buy everything in the game, all within 10 minutes. But it doesn't matter how much everything costs, because the DNS codes made everything free. With how simple it was to do, the exploit quickly gained traction, and soon enough, one in every three lobbies was modded in one way or another. In fact, it wasn't only money and RP values that people were changing. Health multipliers, every item was now free, but way beyond that, they eventually were abused so hard, they were able to give you free collector's edition vehicles, give you god mode, and even get you out of cheater lobbies. This meant that anyone who input a modded DNS code could essentially control anything they wanted within GTA Online. But while some people were just happy getting filthy rich in their favorite game, there were others in the community being affected by this, whether they liked it or not. A lot of OG players will remember the give cash feature in the earliest days of GTA Online. Back in the day, it was super useful for splitting the cash you earned to your friends, but with DNS codes now everywhere, this feature would instead become the topic of a lot of controversy. 
Due to so many people abusing DNS codes in late 2013, these players ended up with more money than they knew what to do with. And so the next best thing is to share the wealth. And people were sharing a lot. Players would begin going into lobbies, robbing a store, and gifting that billion dollars to a random player, then rinse and repeat. Essentially turning every single player in their lobby into billionaires in just a few minutes. And while most of the people were doing this with good intentions, it wasn't seen like that by everyone. Some people didn't like the fact that after they were gifted money, they now had no reason to keep playing, since they now owned everything in the game. Even worse than that, however, were the cheater lobbies. Since these players were seen by Rockstar to have acquired an insane amount of money instantly, the game would sometimes recognize them as a cheater and send them into a cheater lobby, which is exactly what the name implies. These players were being wrongfully placed in these lobbies for something they couldn't even control. And like I mentioned earlier, cheaters could just use a code to get out of these lobbies. But for the legit players, they were stuck and they didn't do anything wrong. For the legit players out there, this essentially made GTA Online unplayable for the entire month of December. Rockstar was quickly trying to figure out how they could patch these DNS codes as every day more and more people were getting extreme amounts of money and RP. But the real reason Rockstar needed to fix this fast was because of the economy. I don't think I have to explain why every player having billions of dollars isn't healthy in a game where the most expensive item is only 10 million. It's also safe to say as well that during this time, shark card sales would have been at an all time low. With everyone being gifted billions of dollars, why would anyone pay for an extra million? So for the next few weeks, Rockstar worked to find a patch as fast as possible. And on January 11, 2014, just over a month after the exploit was discovered, Rockstar Games had finally cracked the codes and had mostly solved the DNS code problem. Some codes still existed, but now they had a way to flag people using them and would hit them with an instant ban if they did. But although Rockstar had stopped the exploit from happening further, they still had to deal with the trillions of dollars the community had acquired, and this would be tricky for a couple reasons. So now that Rockstar had stopped the exploit from happening, the next step was to purge every player of their illegitimate money, and Rockstar was quick to do so. For instance, thanks to some old YouTube videos of mine, I know that I still had 22 billion by January 14th, but my money was gone by January 18th. So it was less than a week after the patch when they had reset everyone's money. However, there was one problem from this that Rockstar couldn't fix, and that was what everyone had bought. It's easy enough for Rockstar to hit reset on everyone's money, but they couldn't take away everyone's items. So even though they lost their money, they still had every single item in the game from this point on, including myself. To this day, I still own every original Pegasus vehicle that was in the game at launch, and that's all thanks to DNS codes. But some people went a step further. The smart people who knew this purge was coming prepared by filling their garage with maxed out supercars so when their money was reset, they could sell all their vehicles and still come out with millions. And when you own everything else, millions is all you need. But you might be asking yourself, why didn't they just ban everyone? While they did ban some people hosting the servers and sent a bunch of people to cheater lobbies, Rockstar couldn't ban everyone using codes because everyone was abusing this exploit. To put it into perspective just how many people were using DNS codes, a user on Reddit who hosted one of these servers had over 65,000 people use just his code, and there were thousands of codes available online. I don't have an exact number, but based on that alone, it's safe to say that hundreds of thousands of players use this exploit. So after taking everyone's money, there wasn't much else that Rockstar could do. Sure, they could ban the people still using them, 
but by this point everyone who used them mostly got off the hook for free. Eventually Rockstar would also go ahead and remove everyone's RP as well. But even I was taken from level 1000 to level 109, which was a higher level than I was before I used the codes. And from this point on, GTA Online would pretty much never have to deal with DNS codes ever again.